on the next Sorted. Coming up on Sorted. I'm about to soil myself on Sorted. <laughs> next. Sharded. <laughs> All right, now the fun part. Let's do this. We're gonna drive the mountain roads in these cars. You wanna take the GTR or the Subaru first? I've never driven an R35. There I would you love go. to start with that. That answers that. All right, let's hit the road and see how these things do. Let's do it. We have AC. Let's see if I can feel this club. And just in case you forgot what we're doing here, a bunch of cars from the east versus cars from the west, one foot down on the right. Street ability counts for 30 points. Tanner brings them 60 to 150 for 40 points. Launches them for a time attack worth 50. And 10 hard laps on the road course could earn 80. Closest to a total of 200 wins bragging rights and a trip to the big finale, East versus West. Hi, I'm Grant Seatrick. Brought my 2011 GTR. The Nissan GTR. Buddy. In 2009, this was the tuner community's absolute wet dream. Uh, this thing had 485 horsepower from the factory, a very trick all-wheel drive system, and one of the first sort of mass production exotic dual clutch gearboxes. Uh, the car has soldiered on, and in fact, they're still selling a largely similar car to this today, but... It's what the tuners did with it that really made this car what it is. When it comes to GTRs, you see a lot of people doing some crazy high horsepower builds with them. And I gotta say, this owner did this right. Supposedly this has about 650 all-wheel horsepowers. And I gotta say, when you're looking for a canyon car, something that's really gonna handle, this is a very satisfactory amount. I look forward to seeing how well this does on the track tomorrow. The only other person I let drive this car is my beautiful girlfriend, Alexa, back home. Hi, Alexa. <laughs> I believe I can fly! <laughs> oh my god! I was not going 120 right there. I was not going 120. The tuner community uh, took the 485 horsepower car and just went right to work creating these runway and racetrack monsters. Uh, it is not uncommon to see cars with 1,500, 2,000 horsepower at these runway racing events. And then it's not uncommon to see 7, 800 horsepower at a track day. That's what we're working with here. We're working with a high sixes to the wheels, which is a great full bolt-on number uh, for one of these cars. I never thought I'd have so much fun driving an R35. This thing rips! Okay, so this is the first car now that I feel like runs out of a little steam. Maybe because it's so fast down low in the range, it really feels like it dies out a little bit as it gets higher in the RPMs. The good thing about this car is it offers a lot of performance and a totally reasonable amount of comfort and luxury. I think it will, I think it'll make it to the end and with no problems. I've beat on this car every time I get in it and I've never had an issue, so. So it's not the fastest car here, but it'll definitely hold its own. I'm David Wabber, I brought a Stormtrooper WRX over here. It's a 2006 STI, uh, 600 horsepower track build. Now, a Subaru on bags, on bags, as it were. So this thing is on air. Air suspension as a, oh my God, the chatteriest clutch ever. All right. And allegedly, oh boy, in the 600 horsepower range. Yeah, I mean, usually you think going up this steep incline right now, you'd think this car will be a little underpowered. As soon as it gets into any sort of boost, it goes. Do I ever let anybody else drive this car? No, no. Ever since it's been built with 600 horsepower, the only person I trust is me behind the wheel. 
I just want to get this thing on any sort of a straightaway to give it a rip. This thing just feels like it wants to eat. Power coming on. It starts to get real crazy after five. Something's beeping at me. <laughs> I don't know what the beep means. What is the beep? Why does it beep at me? Is it like angry or is it happy? I can't tell. And this is not ideal conditions. I'm telling you, this is hot. It is like elevation. You're going over a mountain pass. And this thing is not skipping a beat. I like it. I, it's got a good tune on it. It really just feels like a little car that's been cranked up to 17. It's so much different than what it's like to drive an exotic or factory power. It just feels like like everything has just been made full crazy. And it just looks fun. This is the car you get a rock chip on. You're like, whatever, it's with the other one. It's keeping the other one's company. You know what's shockingly good? Ride. <laughs> Air suspension, huh? Okay. Brake pedal's a little soft. But other than that, I mean, this thing goes. You can definitely have a lot of fun in this car. <laughs> Well, unlike the V10 and the bigger engine cars, the difference between on and off boost is quite stark. Everybody has to own a car that makes that noise at least once in their life because it's sort of fun. Yeah. Well, the turn-in and the grip is it's there. It's really there. By adding these 10 and a half inch front tires, these really, really upped the turn in. And the stability at the at the corner here is very, very good. Why are you beeping at me? Stop beeping at me. This is very good, people. This is very good. Wes Walls, and uh, today I brought my 2017 GT350R. Overall, this is loud. This is very loud. I'm going to roll up the windows to see if it's the same thing. Oh no! I just broke the mirror off. Oh no! <laughs> oh my god. This just gives me a headache already. It's definitely the most obnoxious sounding engine in the group. I just don't think the street ability is there because I can't hear what I'm saying. I read about this, I watched a lot of videos, and I got to hear one, and I was hooked. Oh, but that feels nice. And I'm too short. I'm too short, and I can't hear my own thoughts. What were you saying? If there's one thing that you don't like for a long trip, it's a loud exhaust, but for this, perfect. Anyone that has to listen to this from behind, I pity you. I really like the brakes. I really like the balance. Feels pretty stuck, you know? Nice, that instant torque of the supercharger is nice. But if there is a cop in Palm Springs, he knows I'm doing this. All of them do. At this power level, I don't like people driving this car. Um, I would say of everything, that's the biggest thing I'm nervous about. If I were to have another nerve, it would be the fact that tomorrow is gonna be 105 with this, you know, <laughs> supercharged car. And we're not even in the top half of the power band yet. We are exclusively in the lower half of the power band for the moment. I don't even have to run this motor out. It does feel nice though. It does feel heavier than the other cars, but it does handle pretty nicely. Oh yeah, wow, okay. So it's really, you really get the power above five. That's where the good times roll. It's nice, that instant torque of the supercharger is nice. I guess it is possible to make enormous power with these, but Something tells me that this engine and this setup, compared to what Ford did to achieve similar ends, will not be as effective as what Ford did. I'm not sure why I believe that. Like, part of me wants to think that the flat plane crank engine with the boost could be better, but I also think 
factory engineering might prevail on this one. It's a constant process, um, but I think it's gonna do well this weekend. There's some really capable cars here. You never, I don't, you never underestimate any car, ever. All right, well, my name is John Claridge. I'm from San Diego, California. I brought here a 1995 Toyota Supra. Ooh, Jay-Z, no shit. I love a Supra. And uh, this one's got a, a big single t Oh, Jesus. Oh. <laughs> You're not supposed to feel that in the car. This drives like garbage, I'm sorry. <laughs> Is that the correct dip? Wait, that can't be right. Is that what's supposed to happen? It's like I've got somebody trapped in the trunk and they're trying to get out. I'm clenching my teeth. Whoa, yeah. <laughs> Why do I love dangerous cars so much? Oh shit, 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 shit. That can't be right. This car has a blown dip, or something. It's very, very broken. I am not sure how I feel about this car. And I love this car, but I just don't think I love this one. You're dun, 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 dun. Every corner I'm going around, uh, the steering feels loose and wonky, like he throws it sideways, usually at around 80 miles per hour. This is not a handling car. And fuck, just getting off first? What? My, my jaw was clenched. I'm very, very nervous about this car because it feels exceptionally broken. And I'm not even really kidding. This car feels very broken. It feels like the differential is broken. And I'm very nervous about driving it. It really, really feels properly broken. You can basically guarantee this is broken, so. All right, it makes power, it goes straight, but I don't like that. I'm just gonna roll it down the hill slowly as if I was driving a box truck because I don't wanna buy this one. Ooh, I don't like this at all. I like the car, uh, I like the way it revs. It just does not, like, like if, the, if this is safe and this is unsafe, you're like much closer to here. I mean, you can still get it back to the hotel, but it's like, yeah broken did you did yeah, fully, I, I was like fully matt, broken. matt had me drive this last so i could break it to him but uh, yeah it's it does no, need I told okay broken. confirmed broken yeah i said it's like going to a hospital and trying to pretend to be a doctor you can't do it like hey where's where's that surgery room no 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 like you drove it here like this or you trailered it you drove it okay so if you're gonna drive it to the track i that's our that's our secret we're good with that I, I just want the in-car of Tanner getting the experience without just say, this thing is sorted. Rob and Matt and Amelia drove it yesterday. They said it was perfect. Best super they've ever driven. And just let it go. Whether it's a factory hot rod or a project base for your next build, autotempest.com is where you're gonna find it. It's gonna save you money. Why do I know that? Because it saves you time. It puts all the cars into one search. eBay Motors, Cars.com, and a dozen and more other sites. All the cars are in one search at Autotempest.com. I imagine I don't need to worry about the check engine light, right? The owner of this car, guaranteed, has twice the money as half of these cars here and half the horsepower for it. Hello, my name is Justin North, and I brought my 2000 Impreza, also known as the RSTI. This is probably the car I was most excited to drive. Subarus are an abusive relationship and dollar for dollar, probably one of the worst cars to modify. But when you get them running, you want to keep them forever. And when you break them, you want to fix them. You tell yourself you'll sell them and then you fall right back in love with them again. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. The RSTI is classic rally car goodness combined with big power delightfulness. These cars are very light, they are very powerful. 
Uh, they're super, super fun. Ah, uh, triple disc clutch. You can hear it. Triple disc clutch. Little chattery, but all right. Brakes feel good. Throttle response is good. The steering does feel a little notchy. I think he has a little air in his system. Front Steering's a little dead. Trying to keep an eye on the gauges as I drive. So far, everything looks great. Temps are good. Yeah, the shifter feels good. This is like a standard STI shifter. That's pretty much what you want for this application. Oh, no one ever gets to drive this car. I'm pretty much the primary and only driver. Um, I don't think I've hardly ever had anybody else drive it in the 15 years that I've owned it. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, yes. That's all kinds of go juice right there. <laughs> well, it's, it's definitely at its best when served at full throttle. You have to input a lot of steering. Steering is lazy compared to other sports cars. But it's still very light. The grip is there. Power's there. You know, it's such a crazy feeling when you get in a car with new technology, you really can't hear or feel the road as well. And then you get into really a driver's car. This is the car that makes Subaru famous as one of the rally cars. And you know, this is this is a driver's car to me. Oh, cool attempts are high. Okay, we'll bring it down. I think it'll make it to the very end, I really do. Um, maybe it'll get hot, but I don't think we're gonna have any concerns with anything breaking catastrophically. So that's the thing with these cars. I didn't really feel like I was driving it that hard. You know what I mean? Like that felt like I was in and out of the power like a bit. But I can't believe I'm the guy who just turned on the heat in the tuner car. That definitely takes away streetability. Although that's very effective, the turning on of the heat, that's really effective because the temps are now coming way down. It is super, super, super hot. This Subaru brings me back to the good old days. This brings up some very good memories whenever I drive this car. I hope I'm gonna win, I really do. Um, I think the car has a lot of good aspects that can put me up to the top, um, but there's some stiff competition, so I really hope we'll do well. I don't know about you, but none of us have enough garage space, right? It's easier to buy a car than it is to build a garage. Well, that's where Shape Solutions comes in. They've got your car covered in any situation because they can put them up outside wherever you need. And on top of that, they will buy it back from you when you're done with it for up to 50% of its original value. Lead time is as short as four weeks for standard sizing. And when you're done, to get half your money back isn't a bad deal. So check them out. We put a link below in the description to see if Shape Solutions can have you covered as well. My name is Joel Feingold. I brought my 98 stroked and supercharged Corvette and I'm from Idlewild, California. You know, I'm actually in the market to buy a C5 right now. So this will be very interesting to see how I like this. Everything that is done to it on paper, this sounds like an incredible car. Thousand horsepower C5 Corvette. No problem, buddy. Joel's a little nervous. Joel's car, I've, I've actually like, I've grown up looking at this car on the internet as much as I've grown up driving my own. I've driven this car before. It's kind of a handful. Sounds good. I love the feeling of this built T56. Uh, no parking brake. We know that heavy clutch. Oh, there we go. I mean, this thing is an old lady, you know? It's 22 years old. I have to have the windows down because no AC, it's a thousand degrees. So this car is all the driver. Oh yeah. That's the go. This is extremely loud. This can't be a daily driver. The street ability isn't quite there. I mean, I'm sure you would get used to it. This is predominantly a track car. It's got a built transmission, really hard gears to shift with a stiff clutch. And... <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong, the power's there. But, uh, that seat just fell forward. That seat is not bolted to the ground. I really hope mine is. It's definitely the kind of car that's been assembled and added and refined over time. Do I let anyone else drive this car? Um, no, the only person that's driven it 
with any degree of rowdiness was about two years ago when Matt did a one take. Oh, it's something I remember from owning a Corvette. The transmission tunnel is crazy hot. There's no AC, the horn doesn't work. I hope there's airbags. This car radiates so much heat that my leg is burning against the trans tunnel. The clutch is very stiff when you want to get into first and come off of first, but while driving it and just like power shifting, it doesn't bother me too much. But in general, I suppose it's not as uncomfortable as a thousand horsepower muscle car could be. It is the oldest car here by some margin. Everything is so plastic in these cars though. It feels like a, like a little sketch if I'm honest. I'm a little uncertain of it. Oh, the first car with a working e-brake. Just put it in gear, you're good. Cool, I pulled the e-brake too. Is that alright? Doesn't, Doesn't work? Gear. Just kidding. <laughs> So if you modify cars or you're in that world, imagine having a failure on the car. It stinks when your brakes go out, it stinks when a part breaks, but what stinks the worst is when you have a fire. And especially if you're not prepared for that. And fire extinguishers are probably the single most overlooked modification most car people make to their car. And it's the one thing that if you're not prepared can wipe out your entire build in minutes. We all know what a fire looks like. It's no joke. Do you have a fire extinguisher in your car? If you do, is it a cheap dry chemical extinguisher? Step one, if you have a fire that's electrical, you do not want to use a dry chemical on it as cleanup will be impossible. You will have made a mess of something where you could just have put it out and fixed your electronics. You should be using H3R Performance's Halgard extinguisher, which contains Haltron 1. It's a clean agent that turns into a gas. It attacks fire without leaving a damaging residue. It's what you should reach for first. If you have a chemical fire, meaning flammable liquid, then you need the best dry chemical. Again, H3R Performance has you covered with the max out. Be smart and carry one of each to protect the investment you spent a ton of money on. So if you want to be smart, look good, protect your build with the same guys that are protecting all of us over here at Sorted, visit H3R Performance forward slash Sorted. It's going to save you 15% on your order. I'm telling you, if you ever have to use one of these, it's going to be the best modification you ever made to your car. <laughs> I'm Michael Buckingham from Sheepy Race in Marietta, California. I specialize in the V10 twin turbo platform for R8 and Huracan. This is quick! Oh, and it sounds good. Okay. <laughs> the R8 shares its bones with the Lamborghini Huracan, but it's a little longer and a little taller, and every one of those inches goes to headroom and legroom. And what that means is, you get Lambo performance, but with comfort. Well, this one, this one's gonna get me in trouble. Yes. It makes all the sounds. This thing is cool as hell. The Audi R8 is a Lamborghini Huracan with an Audi badge and a price cut without compromising power or handling. I love these. These are fantastic. The twin turbo V10 platform that Sheepy has set up is like nothing else I've driven. You know, when you've got a giant power car like this, what you don't want is to have it then be undrivable. <laughs> Fifth is where things start to get real fun. <laughs> How are you still gripping? How are you still gripping? Oh, yeah. But you don't want this car to be so much power that you can't drive it in the canyons anymore. That wouldn't be any fun. And what's good about this is you can just squeeze on the throttle and build into that boost slowly, and it maintains its composure. I am in a sheepy twin turbo Lambo, and I am telling you this thing will not put you to sleep. unfortunate thing about this build is the fact that whenever you drive it, because the trends will freak out, you can only drive it with traction control off, ECS. So it's a little disconcerting to know that if you're not, you know, let's say a good driver, but for those of you with experience, why would you have it on to begin with? You just have to be careful because you're going 30 extra miles an hour into this corner. Just sail this thing off a mountain if you're not careful. She sounds good, she handles great, it's comfortable, there's AC, there's airbags. We're still in the factory seats. 
To think that this car comes with a 24,000 mile warranty is awesome. I'm impressed with this kit, it feels nice. It's gonna be hard to go back to naturally aspirated R8s after this. <laughs> and it goes And then it goes And then it goes And here are the scores so far. But as we've learned, the leaderboard can move dramatically once the performance tests start tomorrow. All right, so that wraps the street driving portion. That was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. Was there anything that sketched you out? Yes. <laughs> there was a lot. There's a lot here that really looks a lot better than it is, actually. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? There's some sketch. When they talk about the cars, they sound so sorted. When we get behind the wheel, there's definitely some whispers we have to tell Tanner. Like, hey, by the way. I don't yeah. think we tell him anything. No, we, we let have him get to, like, in the car. Yeah. If yeah, we yeah, like yeah. him, we tell him. The yeah. truth be told, the super owner didn't sound that confident from the very beginning. That's true. That, that does make his you nervous, car reflected it? his confidence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you guys tomorrow at Chuck Walla. We're really looking forward to it. On the next episode of Sorted. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Did you enjoy the show? Of course you did. You're still watching. And that's why you should go over to autotempest.com and start looking for your own overly modded gigantic baby turbo ride so you can join us here on Sorted. Scroll down, click on the link in the description, and get yourself to Auto Tempest because, you know, all the cars, one search. As always, stay sorted.